What's up YouTube fam? Captain Rick Stanzik here and today I'm going to take you on a little walkthrough of my 25 foot contender bay boat. Uh, this is what you see me fishing in all the time. It's what I charter in. Uh, the boat's a little old now. Um, I mean not really but I've had it for almost a year. It's held up great and uh, I'm loving it. I want to walk you through the whole thing, show you some of the options I went with um, and some of the extras I put on here, why I love it for fishing so much and why it's also a great family, you know, fun boat too. So come on, come take a look with me. All right, well, first things first, I wanted to give you a look at the boat from the outside. This is what it looks like when you're looking at it on the water. Uh, real pretty sharp lines. Uh, the ice blue with the gray bottom came out very, very nice. As you can see, the boat's floating pretty shallow here. We're just enjoying a day at the beach with the family. We got the power poles down and just having some fun swimming around. But yeah, she's a beauty. Now, as you can see, I keep the boat out of the water on a floating lift. Uh, this lift is called a hydro hoist. It's made by Tidewater Boat Lifts. I got this before I got the boat. Hadn't really ever seen one before, but I took a look at one and I watched some videos online and they were pretty cool. I'll tell you what, it's mobile, so you don't have to have anything fixed to your dock. You can move it around as you need fit. Keeps the boat totally out of the water. Had a nice T-top option, you know, to keep the boat out of the sun. Um, and it's been great, um, you know, really reliable. I haven't had any issues with it. So I would highly recommend this if, uh, if it's an option for you, if you keep your boat in a slip. Um, yeah, just nice to not have to worry about, you know, growth on your hull or your boat sinking at night, you know, which I'm always worried about, so. This is how I keep the boat and uh, why it's always so nice looking. All right, well, we're gonna start at the bow and kind of work our way back. Uh, first things first is the trolling motor. I've had a trolling motor on my boats for about 10 years now. I had one on my old Seacraft and I've stuck with Minn Kota. I just had good luck with them. I've got the Tarova, which is not the uh, one that has the auto stow and deploy. This is the one you still have to manually lift up and down but it's a 36 volt, 60 inch shaft, which is what they recommend putting on here. And hey, it's just been reliable. I use these things all the time. They probably get as much wear and tear as my Yamaha, you know, I'm talking hundreds of hours a year. But you know, really, I mean, I get a couple seasons out of them without much of an issue. And of course, if you do have an issue, they repair them and they repair them here locally in the Keys, which is great now too. You know, I'm at the point where I just keep two of them. That way I always have one on hand because, I mean, I use the thing. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever anchored this boat yet, honestly. It's just that reliable. One thing I added on here, too, was this uh, Panoptix Live Scope transducer for my Garmin uh, bottom machine. Uh, it shows me fish in real time, and you can point it around with the trolling motor. Pretty cool option. I found this bracket, um, you know, custom bracket that was made by Cornfield Crappy Gear, which is a great way to mount it to the trolling motor. Because otherwise, the little clip they give you here, you have to put on your trolling motor shaft here, and you'd have to take it on and off every time you put the trolling motor up, which is just insane. But luckily these guys came up with a third party option here to mount this thing. Give you a nice little piece of protective tubing here for the wire, and it just goes down into the anchor locker here to the, uh, to the bottom machine. So pretty cool setup. I like that a lot. All right, so you got a nice bow cleat right here. One thing I might add on in the future, but like I said, I haven't anchored the boat, so I've kind of just, you know, been slacking on it, is just a, uh, something to put right here or over here just to route the anchor line around that trolling motor, you know, just to keep it from rubbing against there when you're anchored. Now they have, uh, I think, some push-in options, so I might do that at some point, but anyways, here in the anchor locker, you got room for, you know, a nice anchor. I got a nice fortress there, um, plenty of chain and rope in there. And of course, an anchor ball, just for when we're tarpon fishing around the bridges, you like to be able to throw that anchor ball and chase your fish and still save your spot. Power for the trolling motor gets routed through there. There's a nice little cut here in the hatch for that to go through. And, uh, you know, that's basically what's in there and gives you some nice amount of room for your anchor. You could probably put some other stuff in there too. All right, and so I went with a casting platform as well here. Um, this is an option straight from Contender. I definitely recommend it. Just, it gives you a nice place to sit up here when you're fighting fish, uh, especially older clients that don't move around as well, especially when it's rough. Uh, they're gonna need something up here. It's got a turnbuckle installation here, which is nice if you wanna get rid of this thing. 
it's uh, basically becomes flush mounted because you can unscrew that there and uh, you know then all you have to worry about is this little piece here which isn't going to bother you if you're walking around up there you wouldn't even notice it so that's a great option to have uh, highly recommend it that's where you know if you watch any of my fishing videos my dad's sitting up there all the time we put a zero degree rod holder right here which is nice uh, you know if you got a big umbrella or something um, you can put it up there and have some shade up here on the bow because I don't have a t-top but also works to mount things like GoPros or even stash a fishing rod once in a while speaking of which I put rod holders on there myself on the legs of this uh, casting platform just because you know you need a place to stick the rod up there once in a while um, one thing you know I have noticed you have to watch out for them a little bit when you're running up and down on the bow to move the trolling motor I've kind of gotten used to it but uh, you know I have banged my shins once or twice but that's just the nature of the game we'll take a look inside here plenty of room in this locker keep all my life jackets in here throw cushion cushion for seating in the back of the boat but uh, this all stays pretty nice and dry here every once in a while though when it's really rough you know you take some waves over the bow water's gonna get in there you just can't help it um, so you got to pull your stuff out every once in a while more storage in here this is a nice secondary box that lays underneath it has a drain in there so it won't hold water it drains out through the bilge so very nice a lot of room for stuff in here great for day storage too so this is often where you know if my customers have bigger bags I have them put them in here so very nice option has the hinges here that you know keep the uh, keep pressurized to keep that lid up when you're sitting there and of course they lock down there flush mounted so you're not stepping on any of this stuff when you're moving around all right one other option a lot of these people like on this boat um, well it's not an option it's standard is this bow seating you know bench it's a big u-shape so you can sit you know four or five people up here pretty easily and comfortably it's not great to sit on when you're running just because it's a little bouncy i usually always have people sit in the back of the boat or on the cooler right here but when you're just kind of lounging around you know doing a sandbar day or cruising slow it's a nice place to sit um, i got cup holder slash rod holders here and here which are nice to put your drinks in when you're just sitting there fishing you don't want to keep them in there when you're running though unless they're real heavy and loaded because uh, they'll fly away lots of storage in these benches i got my stuff in here i usually use this one for customer stuff which is usually enough for a day's fishing trip but uh there's also rod storage in there and the tubes that go up through that bow hatch if you wanted to leave rods in here um, there's also one more bench seat here which has some more storage extra life jackets in my backrests for the leaning post and back of the boat I don't really use them too much so they kind of just sit in here uh, this hatch is a little tougher to get into because you have to unbuckle this cushion um, on both sides but not a very big deal I don't go in and out of there a lot so again that's kind of where I store stuff that I don't need to grab all the time all right and now we have this deck box here which is a great fish box you, need, you can keep ice in there it drains through the bilge got a lot of room in there you know you could put fairly large fish in there if you caught a bigger grouper cobia kingfish something like that drain right there um, you know very nice I don't use this a whole lot because I don't keep a whole lot of you know fish like that so you know I have people throw stuff in there that you know they don't mind getting wet could keep cast nets or something like in that in there too if you needed to so very nice standard on these bay boats also your fuel fill is right here it's a self venting fuel fill so you don't have any uh, thing hanging outside the boat where your excess fuel goes out or where you have to worry about water coming in um, also 90 gallon tank on here standard so you got a lot of range you're talking 250 miles or something like that even if you're running fairly hard so you can go a long way all right and then we got the console here with the standard uh cooler with the seat built in here it's got a nice cushion backrest there plenty of room for drinks and stuff in here and uh, ice stays in here for the day no problem um, got a drainage hole there which i just leave open so you don't get a bunch of water in here soaking everything if you got sandwiches or whatnot you got your uh, running lights on the side 
windshield standard you know i would recommend if you're going to be running 50 miles an hour you definitely want a windshield up there now inside this baby take a look uh contenders well known for their beautiful rigging of electronics um you know everything's routed very nicely and tied you know it's like a work of art you got battery chargers trolling motor battery chargers alternator charger for the trolling motor your uh power steering assist five batteries two house batteries three trolling motor batteries um so yeah your uh amplifier for the sound system and yeah a lot going on in here but again very pretty not a whole lot of extra room in here so yeah you kind of need every inch you can get out of this baby one other nice thing about all these rod holders and uh cup holders is as you can see these tubes here they all drain uh through these tubes so you don't get water dripping down into your console or uh anywhere so that's nice you do have to kind of flush those out once in a while obviously they get uh just stuff in there over time but uh you know i haven't really had too many clogs with them and uh yeah everything in here st has stayed bone dry so definitely the place to you know you got a little extra room to put something like a nice camera or whatever that just can't get wet also if you ever need to like take batteries out or you know bigger stuff this opens down here too so you get that whole you know front open if you need to but just going in there day to day you only need to go in the top there all right and so the gunnels of the boat you know are cushioned which is nice if you're fishing up against there something to lean against uh rod holders under the side there if you want to keep rods i don't really keep a lot of rods there though because you're always kicking them so i just prefer to stick them in the stand up rod holders on the side here or maybe even back here if i got a few more than eight but eight's usually what i bring most every day cup holders here you know you got your nice box here to keep stuff in which is lockable you got some usb chargers in there and i have my compass in there because again i have another zero degree rod holder up here for uh cameras or sun umbrella i put a little thing here to hold my cell phone which is nice a little more storage here um, garmin electronics i got the uh 86 series newer garmin unit which uh I have three transducers plugged into because I have a transom mounted transducer for side scan. I have a through hole transducer for reading bottom when I'm running. And I also have that live scope transducer, which I mentioned on my trolling motor. So, you know, three transducers, a lot of electronics for a smaller boat like this, but I do use them all. You can see here, I got the nice satellite imagery on this uh, machine and it's pretty responsive. It's just getting booted up now, so it's taking uh, going a little slower, but yeah, very pretty. You can see all the channels. I like this unit a lot. Um, Garmin VHF, don't use that a whole lot where I go. Um, all your switches here. Yamaha Attack here. Fusion Sound Stereo head unit there. That's lasted real well. You know, those speakers still working. I use that when I'm out with the family, don't use it on charters so much, so it hasn't gotten a whole lot of wear and tear. But you got your trim tabs there. The trim tabs on this boat are real nice. They recess up into the hull, so you don't ever have to worry about hitting them or snagging them. They also go up um, every time you stop the boat, so they're always, you know, you don't have to worry about them hanging down if you're putting the boat on a lift like this. Um, your steering wheel here, power steering again. You can move it up and down if you need to, just like that throttle there key switch there and the leaning post i went with the smaller mini leaning post option because uh you know i like room to walk around back here i put a little velcro on there to hold that shut when you're not standing in the boat on the trailer this thing will open up so you need something there to hold it closed but that's an easy thing to do i keep all my day tackle in here it's a little messy but uh i know where everything is and it's right where i need it i put zero degree rod holders in here because I don't really like the rods sticking out at an angle because uh, if you're trying to walk around back there, they get in the way. Again, I usually don't keep a whole lot of rods here, but I keep my tools, D-hooker, chum launcher, net, GoPro handles in there now. I zip tied this on here just to hold knives and uh, pliers there. And my drink holder, I got one of those Yeti uh, you know, steel thermoses that fit in there. 
nice deck mat to stand on. You got fresh water wash down, salt water wash down there, and room here to keep a cooler. I keep that big Yeti on here a lot just to keep bait, but right now I'm not using it a lot. And I just got the smaller cooler on there for now. Also, just to show you, here's how that uh, backrest goes into these uh, zero degree rod holders. Nice and firm. If you had people sitting back here, that cushion goes right here, so you got a nice comfortable place to sit and four people can comfortably sit back there. And then uh, this bad boy also fits into this. Um, same spacing and everything. So if you wanted to backrest while you were sitting here running, that's an option too. I don't really ever use it though. And uh, you know, again, I use that for tool storage and such. So I just keep it in storage, but it's there if you need the comfort. All right, so on the transom here again, uh, you got regular rod holders there and there. The uh, drink cup holder rod holders here and there. These seats here, you know, fold up and down. They go up and down pretty easy. You do have to kind of pull them out straight a little bit, which you do need two hands for unless you're skilled like me there. But nice place to sit when you're back here and they get out of the way and you don't even know they're there when they're out of the way. Big live well, you know, this one with the clear lid. You got a lot of room in here for bait. I had an aerator added on too, so if my pump ever goes out, I have air and whenever you pick up and run with the boat, there's a clamshell at the bottom of the boat so it gets water pick up when you're moving. That bubbler will keep uh, most bait alive, you know, unless you got 500 pilchards in there, but if you got your 10 dozen shrimp and two dozen pinfish and a few crabs and a dozen mullet, all that stuff will stay alive with just the bubbler. So that's a nice option and a nice kind of backup if your live well pump ever goes out. These boats only come with one live well pump. You probably could get a second one for the secondary well here, which I might do in the future on my next boat. But uh, so far I've been okay with one. If you're wondering what these hoses here are, I keep a lot of my bait in my boat overnight. Um, and this is just an aquarium pump that pumps fresh water and, you know, salt water, but fresh salt water from the basin here. And also an aerator that uh, just runs off the 110. So keeps everything alive in there and I don't have to dip my bait in and out every day. So two wells, awesome setup. Um, you got some bilge access here. Bilge is a little hard to get to. You can change out a live well pump through the access in here, which again, I keep my nets in here just so that they're readily available. But there's a pie eye there to get to your pump, which I'll just show you from here. So that's your live well pump. Your bilge pumps are down there. You need to go to a dealer to get those bilge pumps replaced though. They're just not something anyone can get to, but luckily they don't really go out too often. Um, not something you should have to replace, but you know, maybe every four or five years. Again, more bilge access here. I got my net buckets in there, spare prop. This is cool, your swim ladder tucks up in there and stays totally out of the way. You can see right here in the back where that thing comes out. Again, your recessed trim tabs. And here's the powerhouse of this boat. I went with a Yamaha 300. Um, I would recommend that. It's uh, very fuel efficient. <clears throat> plenty of speed. This boat tops out at like 58 miles an hour with a light load. So you're cruising at, you know, 41, 42 miles an hour at 4,000 RPM and really good on the fuel. I think, you know, at that cruise speed, you're probably getting 3.2, 3.5 miles a gallon, you know, depending on, uh, you know, your load. Um, Bob's machine jack plate. Uh, I think you have to have a jack plate on here just to get the clearance to trim up your motor but pretty much uh, standard on a lot of bay boats nowadays. Um, I went with the Bob's machine. It's a little uh, sturdier and beefier and just uh, engine doesn't vibrate as much when you're running at high speed. So nice option. Power poles here. I went with twin 10 foot power poles and the uh, nice jack plate mounting option. Definitely recommend twin power poles if you're fishing shallow water, which you often are on a bay boat. They just stop you quickly and quietly and uh, reliable. I mean, I had one on my old boat. I don't think I had an issue with it for probably three years. And again, 
I use these things a lot, you know, fishing 200, 250 days a year. Um, and Power Pole is such a great company. If you have any issue at all, they will be right there to help you. Um, I got a three blade prop on this boat, which is a Yamaha Saltwater Series 2, 21 inch pitch, standard. I think that prop gives you just about the best speed you'll find out of this motor. You could get a little better hole shot and, uh, you know, turning capabilities and be able to play with a jack plate a little bit more with a four blade prop. But I did try a four blade prop on here and I lost, I think six miles an hour off the top end, uh, which I just didn't want to do. So I've just stuck with the three blade uh, 21 pitch prop that came standard on here. So that's basically everything. She's a beautiful boat, having a lot of fun with her. Again, plenty of room for seating for the family. You could get a T-top option if you wanted. Um, I'm just not a T-top guy for my style of fishing. I like to be able to get around and cast around and cast over there when I'm standing here. You know, you get uh, certain shots at fish with a limited time, so quickness is key. Um, and I'm a you know charter fisherman, so I use this boat for the family, but I have my options for the family when I need them. So definitely recommend contender boats. I've been in love with this boat. It's so cool being able to travel at 50 miles an hour comfortably. Boat's super dry, uh, super nice ride. I don't think you'll find any ride better. It does have a stepped hull, which I'll kind of point out here. You can, you can see that there and that there. Those are steps in the hull, which are just little pockets uh, designed for air to come up, in that, come up in there when you're running. And that kind of helps give the back of the boat lift, gets the back of the boat up out of the water, less drag, better fuel economy. Um, not really many drawbacks to it. Only drawback I could think of is uh, if you have a transom mounted transducer, uh, it creates a lot of turbulence from all those air bubbles and stuff. Um, so you can't read bottom when you're going at speed but that's why you get a through haul transducer if you want to be able to you know mark bottom and know how deep you are when you're running which may or may not be important to you but again that's what you have to do when you have a stepped haul but anyways great performance out of this stepped haul you know contender boats are made in homestead locally for me and they're hand laid glass they're very meticulous about the finish you know just very great product they've been around a long time Everybody knows them in the center console world, one of the best center consoles, you know, ever made. They've been making this bay boat, I think, for eight or nine years now, and they put a lot of that know-how and craftsmanship into this boat. Um, she's solid. You know, I think she floats in about 10 inches of water, it says on paper. When you get it all loaded down, it's probably a little bit more, but I will say I've been impressed at the places I can go in this boat compared to my old 20-foot Seacraft, which was more of a true center console, but this thing I mean uh, if you've watched any of my videos you see where I fly in and out of it's just amazing so contender boat 25 foot bay uh, this one might be for sale here in another year or so when I get the new one so I'll take good care of her all right guys